Jumping right back into it guys, using a vice grips to clamp onto the non-machined portion of the rotor pack assembly. And I'm just going to slowly pull this out carefully. Toys for life. Those actually look pretty darn nice. So we're going to put these in a safe place where they can stay clean. You don't want to try to take the carbon off. You don't want to monkey with this at all. Just leave it alone and put it somewhere safe where it'll stay spotless. Before we stash the rotor pack away somewhere safe, you want to make sure you clean off each one of these shafts really well with the towel. And then using your fingernail, make sure you go around the entire perimeter of each one of these to make sure there's no grooves, no scratches, or no wear that you can tell. If these are shot, then your rotor pack is basically shot. Luckily for me, mine are good. Guys, I already started doing some porting, but I want to take a step back and show you before I did that, I meticulously scrubbed and cleaned the entire interior of the blower using some good solvent and a bunch of terry cloth towels. Before I even did that, I was particularly careful to clean what's underneath the Gorilla Tape here, which is the bearings for those rotor pack shafts. That's where they go. So I made sure that I cleaned the grease out of those, that no debris got inside there, and then I sealed them up with this Gorilla Tape so that as I'm doing the porting work, they stay clean. The housing doesn't look new, but uh, I had this thing apart about five years ago, and it looks pretty much exactly the same as it did then. As you may recall, the porting plan is to extend this triangle right down into this corner, come across here, and essentially make the bottom part of this triangle quite a bit bigger because the air gets pulled back and then down. So if we can open this up, this is the main part here where air is coming down into the intake manifold. And then you can see the rough flashing around the entire perimeter of the triangle. And we're just going to bevel this edge and smooth it and then clean and smooth the entire bottom part here of the supercharger outlet port. That's the piece I was looking for. I would say it's coming along quite well. Just using a die grinder with an aluminum bit, used a jigsaw with a bimetal bit to get into this corner, and just take it really slow to make sure you don't go too far. We're just beveling this edge a little bit. And really we're just completing the arrow. And the bolts that go through there, there's still plenty of threads. We'll just have to cut them off a little short so they don't protrude into the flow of the air. Guys, we're about half done with the porting of the outlet. I just wanted to show you um, where you can see each side to see the difference. You can see in that lower left-hand corner, it opens up an awful lot of space. And we went ahead and smoothed the whole perimeter as the air exits. And you can see this one here had some rough cast flashing. And we got rid of that nice and smooth exit. Smoothed everything down a little bit, cleaned it up. I'm going to go ahead and do a time lapse as I do the other side so you can get an idea of what's involved. So guys, here's the finished product on the outlet side of the supercharger. And I've got to say, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. I'm going to show you a before and after. And back to the before and after. And you can really see it's probably like around a 15 to 20% opening. 
on the bottom of the arrow that allows more air to go through, especially since this thing is being uh, cranked up high with that 2.8 pulley. This should help, but at the end of the day, we're gonna find out at the track here in just a couple of months. Now let's take a peek at the inside, and you can see how that's really cleaned things up as well. I'm just super excited to get this thing going. Now let's go ahead and shift gears and take a peek at the inlet side of the supercharger. Well guys, here's a little before and after. Here's the uh, after of cleaning this out. And all I really did is use a little solvent and of course a nice wire brush on a drill to clean that out nice. Now the next thing I want to do is look at the gasket and see how that lines up on here to see if we've got any opportunity to open this up at all. And the answer is no. This is machined right at the size of the gasket so there's really nothing I can do to open this up for the stock throttle body but there is this little ridge right here, little core shift or something. So we'll definitely smooth that out. And I think what I'm gonna do, this is pretty rough here. I'm gonna use an aluminum bit and see if I can't smooth that out a little bit along with a little like 80 grit sandpaper. Let me take and work on this a little bit and we'll see what we can do. About a half an hour later, a bunch of sanding and die grinding. We got rid of that ridge that was over here. and smoothed it out a lot. It doesn't really look a whole lot different, but we took a fair bit of metal out of there. So that's as good as this is gonna get. I'm not gonna try to open this up anymore because it's just as wide as the throttle body is. Next, we gotta get this blower housing ready for paint. And to do that, we're gonna remove most of the enamel paint with a combination of wire brushes, solvents, and little brushes to get this down mostly to aluminum and give it a fresh coat of enamel. And guys, that's where I need your help. You're familiar with my basic setup here. What color, if you could leave a comment below, do you think I should paint this housing? I'll take that into consideration. And next week we'll do that. We'll reinstall the rotor into the blower housing and hopefully get this thing back on the car. And guys, if you like the video, consider subscribing, hit the thumbs up, share it with somebody you know. And as always, thanks for watching.